Hey everyone, this is Casual Fanatic. Film reviews without the shoes. I'm Luca, your casual viewer. And I'm Cayman, your fanatic. Wow, Cayman, well, happy Saturday. I mean, Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy day. <laughs> happy weekend. <laughs> I'm getting my days confused. Yeah, happy weekend. Um, yeah, it's been it's been quite a weekend for me. I know we were we were just talking about it before recording, but some weird shit's happening over here. So for the audience, is what it is. A weird shit. Um, like my house is falling apart, which I mean is <laughs> sort of normal, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect you to say that. That's funny. Um, yeah, it's just just some some weird stuff that doesn't doesn't really matter. Trying to forget but... about it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's in the past now. All good. All good. Have you got any plans for the rest of today after we finish recording? Um, probably get something to eat. I haven't had lunch yet, and I did. I don't even know. I had a couple chips for breakfast, like literally two chips. Oh my god, <laughs> that's that's not good. You need more. Yeah, well, I was preparing yeah, for this. It, it is what it is. Yeah, I had I, uh, I had a uh, four soft boiled eggs uh one avocado and three sandwiches with um um like salami on it sounds pretty good yeah it was not bad i'm full <laughs> um but in my book i am after this i'm actually gonna go straight to uh the park because i have like a weekly volleyball thing that i go to there um yeah so that's my trip after this and it gets so early so dark so early here now that yeah. it's some it's hard to you know get a lot of play time in with the sun going down at like, you know, what, maybe six or five now. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I'm honestly like, I'm so on the fence because I'm never, I just like the times of the year where it's nice are so short and is very upsetting. I feel like yeah. I just got done with like months and months of it being super, super hot. And I'm like, all right, I'm ready for it to cool down. But then like, there have been a couple nights this week where it's been like, in the 50s at night and i'm like okay but i'm not trying to have like winter yet just like give me a break <laughs> yeah and like even during winter when it's like a great season it's always it's also short which kind of sucks too but you know it is what it I just is feel like it's always it's always either too hot or too cold yeah well it's never too cold for me man if you have the right jacket you're you're set like it doesn't even matter. i mean yeah but there's also like you can't just like go outside in some shorts and like enjoy yourself ah uh, you can here yeah you know, yeah well you can not in colorado here. oh yeah maybe not by you i'm like the sun is so booming the, here that like it's crazy half the what year i go outside and i'm sweating to death and then the other half i have to wear like <laughs> six layers to stay warm man that is tough see what you need to do is you need to move to colorado because the summer here is actually perfect i've actually heard that like people always like talk about colorado they're like oh yeah they have such intense winters but like I like looked at like average temperatures and apparently like most of the year it's like 70 to 80. Really? I mean, yeah, in the summertime for sure. Like during the nights, like even at the hottest times of the day, it would go down to like 64, 65 at night uh, consistently. Yeah. And then like the hottest it's been here that I, since I've lived here has been, I think like 98. I mean, it's been in the hundred, maybe it's been in the hundreds once or twice, but I mean, that's like so rare and like sweating here really isn't a thing because it just it literally just evaporates right off of you. It's awesome. But yeah. Yeah. Besides, uh, you know, all of our great weather and activities we're going to be doing, what will be, we be talking about today? What Which movie? So today we are going to be talking about the 2018 film Avengers Infinity War. Ooh. It is a whopping two and a half hours rated pg-13 directed by anthony and joe russo and written by christopher marcus and stephen mcfeely yeah it is very long like i saw it and i was yeah. like wait a minute holy smokes <laughs> well i i tried to watch it last night and then i ended up falling asleep so i actually had to finish it this morning <laughs> no you did not <laughs> <laughs> well i think that tells me a little bit about the movie uh what you thought of it at least uh, well it was just like it was really late at night because I had been doing a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. And so I didn't I didn't start watching it until like 11. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's a late one. Well, besides that, wh what did you think of it? Like overall? Um, I 
really like this movie. I mean, I know I've I've said before with like the the two Avengers movies and Captain America Civil War, I always like enjoy the team up movies, not necessarily because it's like, oh, I get to see all these fancy people, <laughs> but like I like from a character standpoint, especially being able to watch different characters interact with each other that like it's something that you don't normally get to see like we're used to seeing the guardians of the galaxy interact with each other and we're used to seeing tony stark and james rhodes and like those people interact with each other but when you have like rocket raccoon teaming up with thor those aren't two people that that talk to each other very often so it's it's fun to see these like mismatching characters and see what happens Mm. when they get put together that's interesting that's interesting i mean i i get your viewpoint about you know all the interaction and i thought that was great but i'll be i'll be real i did not like this movie um no 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 i think it was it was too choppy for me like so much was happening in this movie where (laughs) like everything just felt like it was a like a like a quarter cup filled every time something should have been like a full cup if that makes sense I interesting things, interesting yeah i think they things just happen too quickly without like a good backstory in my opinion but it was definitely a very fast-paced movie but i think um it, 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 was a it, 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 it does pace. it relies well it just it relies on a lot of prior knowledge i think the like backstory and like the setup that you're looking for is the 18 previous movies that came before this one yeah and i think maybe they don't they don't like explain a lot of stuff in this movie they just expect you to know it already right right i mean i don't know maybe that's what's like annoying but it, it just felt so empty and just dumb I, I don't know like it did feel empty to me we can go into more depth of it i don't want to like spoil right, anything right. but <laughs> to me i feel like they could have made four movies out of this one movie easily like if there are what six infinity stones right yeah each two that they collect could have been a movie in its own like with great detail and like using the actors rather than like one movie where they collect all the stones and it's like it happens in like maybe a week not even like a few days yeah. i don't know but before we get into that what was what was the budget of this movie and all that stuff i'm kind of interested because these actors were kind of big ballers so the budget for this one was 321 million dollars mm-hmm. and worldwide it made about 2 billion and 50 million wow is that one of the highest grossing films um it is i think the fourth film ever to break two billion wow uh the the other three were titanic uh james cameron's avatar oh yeah that was a good one and uh what was the third one i don't remember i'd have to look it up but yeah it's it's definitely up there like it it was wild and i think yeah it i mean it it got 250 million just opening weekend in only the u.s and canada yeah that's impressive that is impressive i mean their lineup for this movie was i mean massive yeah i mean like everyone you could ever imagine in a marvel film was in it basically so it makes sense yeah well i uh have a feeling that we might be doing some ideological fighting during this uh review so let's go ahead and take this opportunity to step into the boxing ring Let's do it. I think you went first last time, so I'll go first this time. All right. Uh, I will say the Mad Titan Thanos is on a mission to collect the six Infinity Stones in order to stop him. The Avengers, the Guardians of the Galaxy, and several other people, <laughs> several <laughs> other heroes, um must join together to uh prevent him from accomplishing his goal mm, okay that's what i've got okay okay mm. i already forgot that bad guy's name <laughs> <laughs> this is not a joke man i am so bad with names um what was the bad guy's name again the main dude <laughs> thanos thanos thank you thank you thanos wanting to in his mind return the universe to balance 
is in the process of collecting all of the infinity stones in order to complete his plan. However, the universe does not agree with him in which multitudes of heroes such as the Avengers, etc., band together <laughs> to prevent this mass homicide from occurring across the universes. That's all I got. I don't want to be too specific. Yeah. All right. So the official description here on letterbox.com says, as the Avengers and their allies have continued to protect the world from threats too large for any one hero to handle, a new danger has emerged from the cosmic shadows, Thanos, a despot of intergalactic infamy. His goal is to collect all six infinity stones, artifacts of unimaginable power, and use them to inflict his twisted will on all of reality. Everything the Avengers have fought for has led up to this moment. The fate of the Earth and existence itself has never been more uncertain. Mm. It's a tough one. Um, I'm going to say I win this one, dude. I'm just going to be real. <laughs> you think so? I think so. Because it mentioned like his evil plan mm -hmm. and the extinction of, you know, humans and the solar universe and whatnot. You're right. You're right. And then... It also only mentioned the Avengers, and then it said others. And I said, <laughs> it said et and their allies. <laughs> yeah, and their allies. Now it said the Avengers and etc. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like I was just as vague as the. Uh, yeah, you did. You did talk about like from his point of view. Yeah, and I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't get into like what he was gonna do with the Infinity Stones. Just that he wanted to get all of them. Right. Right. Okay, you got this one. Yes. <laughs> it's been a fucking while holy shit <laughs> oh okay nice all right <laughs> and i didn't even know the guy's name at first Ooh, okay i should I should have counted that as a negative against you <laughs> true, i'm not true. i'm not helping you on the next one <laughs> yeah right i'm like fuck what's that guy's name again i could have just googled it but i was like ah fuck it i'll just ask um all righty well i think um i think i hear a interruption happening right Indeed. I, I think we need to take a little breaky. Uh, we'll, we'll take a little breaky and then we'll uh, maybe come back and talk about this movie. Breaky and then we'll be, we'll be backy. Boom, look, breaky gone. Boom, look, breaky gone. And uh oh, I hear something else incoming. This is the spoiler section. If you don't want to be spoiled, don't listen. Oh, wow. That was crazy. It came out of nowhere. Indeed. Indeed it did. Okay, well, as the uh, spoiler, you know, alert said, if you don't want to listen to this and if you don't want to be spoiled, don't listen. Um, yeah, Switch away or, uh, yeah, because we're about to talk about the movie in depth and detail. Um, right, so why don't you uh, explain a little bit more yeah. about what you meant about the emptiness? Yeah, so whenever... It would like sometimes cut to Thanos getting one of the Infinity Stones. I feel like the scenes were just too short. Like even the one where he threw his daughter off the cliff and then he got the stone. Yeah. Like all of that happened within maybe 15 minutes or maybe 10. Like no time at all. And I think that's why the movie was so fucking long. Like two hours and 32 minutes. That's a long movie. It, and it's yeah. because they they were in crunch time trying to get all of this stuff in there and then all the backstories and all that stuff. I, I really do think it would have been a lot more like enjoyable, let's say, if they just split it into two. Like make one movie of Thanos get, getting three and just make those scenes of him acquiring these three stones like really fucking good. Um, I don't like think he, longer necessarily means better, though. I don't I know. Feel like, like more in depth, at least. Like... But like what more depth do you need out of the out of the Vormir scene? Because like there's the whole thing with like them discussing um you see it because it starts with uh Peter Quill and Gamora on the ship talking about Gamora's like, hey, I know something that Thanos doesn't know. And if he finds out, he'll be unstoppable. So if he captures me, I need you to kill me. And that was one of the like I will say that what is one of the negative things that I had was because when Peter asks her ask, asks her about it, she says, "Well, if I tell you, then you would know too." But like, she didn't have to be specific. But 
she could have just said like hey i know where the soul stone is yeah. but i like i don't want thanos to find out so i need you to kill me right right um but that like plot thread starts there on the ship and then we have the whole other scene where she does end up getting captured by thanos on nowhere mm-hmm. after he gets the reality stone and then peter does try to kill her and then thanos turns his like bullets into bubbles they go back to thanos's ship and then he reveals that he has also captured nebula and is torturing her um and then found out like through like a video recording software in her head that gamora knows where the soul stone is and she's been lying to him and then they finally get to vormir and then there's that whole uh, you can tell that gamora is like always trying to find a way around the situation like even up until the last second like she's like okay i'm just not gonna tell him where he is okay he knows that i know but i'm gonna keep it from him and then he starts torturing nebula and she's like okay i care about nebula too much so i'm gonna tell him where it is but then they get there and when the the red skull which i thought was really cool that he got brought back in this movie yeah um red skulls like you have to give up something you love and then gamora immediately is like oh well we've fucking beaten him then because thanos doesn't care about anything and then when after there's like a solid emotional moment when she realizes that he actually does care about her then she's like oh fuck but then still like is like all right well i'll just kill myself and then he won't be able to use me like literally up until the last second trying to find a way to defeat him or like stop his plan and i don't know i just felt like through those three or four different scenes we had this one story being told and i don't really know that anything else needed to be added to that yeah i mean maybe it was just corny that he was able to like capture his daughter that easily or kind of corny that like when they got to the island, like this mysterious being shows up in front of them, which is the Red Skull. And he's like, yeah, let me just show you where the top is. And he like walks them up there and he's like, well, you got to get rid of something you love. And this, I don't know, to me, like, that's just like, like you said, yeah, everything, it, it does work, obviously, but I feel like they could have done more with it. Like maybe a totally different way of approaching it. Um, I don't know. I, I just think that him capturing his daughter like that was too easy. Um, like the scene where he was torturing that robotic daughter of his was also kind of like lame. Like they talked to her for a while and then they were like, okay, well we're leaving now. We're going to go travel. And then they were there. I don't know. Like it was just so, it was too plain for me. It it was. And that's not like the only, um, infinity stone where I I thought of that. I thought that same thing. Um, I'm trying to remember there was one where he just kind of like got it and was like, all right, cool. Next. (laughs) Um, and, and oh, like with the like with the guy that um what, what's his name um the collector who yeah like even the collector scene like yes they they did cool things with it but like you they got there and he already had the stone yeah but you have to think about like imagine what it would be like if we saw him get that stone i feel like it wouldn't be that interesting there's not an army on nowhere he would charge in there kill a bunch of people blow some shit up And then, like, pretty much exactly what you saw with the, like, fake reality, he would, like, torture the Collector, and then eventually the Collector would be like, okay, there's the stone, and he gets it. Like, Right, but if the Avengers... I feel like we don't really need to see that to understand what happened. But if the Avengers were already there, and they were aware that they left the stone there, like, someone was aware that the stone was there, right? And if they know that Thanos is out collecting these fucking stones, well, then why haven't you gone and, like, you know, added extra security? That's why they went there. Well, yeah, but like that's way too late already. Like imagine all the time that passed during the movie by the time they got there. I mean, that was so much time. And then they got there. Also, they didn't know that Thanos was like super, super like because up until this point, he hadn't been as hands on, which is why like in the beginning, he just like he sent Loki to Earth. He was like doing all of this stuff behind the scenes and sending other people. Right. And then. There was that one, I think it was in like one of the Captain America movies, I think, or maybe in Thor, where there's like a post credit scene and he's like, okay, fine, I'll do it myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then that's when he like goes out doing stuff. But like no one else knows that he's doing that until it happens, until he attacks Thor's ship 
and then Hulk gets gets sent to Earth, and he's like, "Thanos is coming." Like that is when they find out. Right, right. But even then, like if you know where some of these stones are, you got to keep an eye on it. Like they kept an eye on. Um, well, the only uh, people that knew that there was a stone on nowhere were his daughter, the and Guardians, and Guardians. um some people from Asgard that already died. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like. The only stone they actually put a lot of effort in was the knowledge stone and the time stone. Like those two, I, I feel like the back and forth is what I really liked. Like there was so much action between like, oh, are they going to get it? Oh, no, they didn't get it. Oh, my God, they're back. Like, are they going to get it now? And like they fight it off and then like they kind of lose. But then, you know, they're in the ship. And then like that's so much more dynamic to me than, oh, yeah, like let me just throw my kid off the fucking roof shed one tier and well, I have the stone you now. have to cool. think especially Thanks. because there is six infinity stones you have to make each of them different and so that's another thing where i feel like if they had gone through the trouble of showing thanos individually collect every single stone it would get very repetitive like even like when the movie starts he already has the power stone from xandar right but like we like I, I still I don't see any purpose in us watching him go to Xandar, blow up their military and get the stone like that is I don't know, but it's just another battle sequence to fill space and we don't need to fill space. But if it was split to two movies where the two movies had three stones each, I feel like even the final scene, like the final battle scene with him having all the five or six stones would have been way better. Like even that final scene where Thor comes in and he uses his axe and it goes straight through his chest and he like we think he's dead and he's like you should have gone for the head and then he just snaps and that's like it basically that's like the whole movie it's done mm -hmm. like to, that was just so awful i the movie ended and i was confused i was like i i felt so empty that like like the fighting scene with thor having all of the infinity stones took less time than it took for like the camera scenes to go all around the world of like people all of a sudden turning into ash. I don't know. Wait, what? You're you know, saying the fight took longer than the ash scenes? No, no. The fight was shorter than the, than the ash scenes. Like the ash scenes were like maybe five, six, seven minutes long. But then the fight scene with like him and like acquiring the last stone and putting it in his hand and then like Thor coming in and then him just snapping and that, that being it. And then him teleporting away somehow. Bruh. <laughs> I just. Well, yeah, because. Know. Well, first of all, he teleported away because that's what the space stone does. He's been teleporting the whole movie. Right. But he has this giant hole in his chest. Like, I mean, yeah, but he's obviously okay. not dead yet. So he uses his last little bit of strength to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah. But then like, where is he going to go? He's going to go somewhere. He still has a giant hole. He can't like heal himself, can he? Unless he uses the time he's stone. pretty guess, damn strong. I mean, he, liter he literally beat Hulk in the first scene. Like, yeah, he beat Hulk shit out. Like, that was crazy. Yeah. But. I mean, even um, the Hulk would be fucking down bad if he had a giant hole in his chest from Thor's but like, axe I, that's supposed to like stop him. I do. I, I think the the fact that we didn't get a bigger fight between Thor and Thanos is like, yes, it would have been satisfying to watch. But from a narrative standpoint, I feel like it makes more sense. First of all, because it aids in the whole idea of turning against people's expectations because like in a normal movie you'd be like oh thor has gone on this whole journey to like craft this weapon and then he's going to come in in the end and beat the bad guy and everything's going to be okay but then even after all of that effort he still fails yeah. and the movie ends with thanos winning and i like just the sheer shock of that and i i like obviously i know it's gonna happen this time watching it but like seeing that in the theater like just was mind-blowing that they would just end a movie and be like yeah the bad guy won fuck you yeah no I, I i did like the part i did like the fact that he won i don't have an issue with that i just wish like that scene would have like lasted longer um like even thor crafting that battle axe was longer than that fight scene. I think like that was maybe one of the shortest scenes in the whole movie where Thor, where uh, Thanos literally walks in from his teleporter, literally just like destroys everyone. And then just t like the one cool part was where he used the time stone to like reverse time. And then he just took the stone, put it in his hand, snapped and th the movie was done. Like, I don't know. It, I, it was just, I don't know, for a movie of that caliber, for a movie like using all of those actors, it should have been more in my opinion. 
Um, not to mention, like, I mean, that's all the fucking people that like got killed off within the first 10 seconds of the movie. <laughs> I guess un- understandable. I just like, I don't know. I feel like what you're asking for would have been way too repetitive. And even if you split it up into two movies and did three stones here, three stones there, it would be the same exact thing every time. It would be Thanos goes to a planet, there's a big battle, he ends up winning and gets the stone. And we like, there were several scenes in this movie where we got to see Thanos using the stones. We saw him use them on Nowhere fighting the Guardians. We saw him use them on Titan when he was fighting Doctor Strange yeah. and and all of them people. And then we saw him use them again when he got to Wakanda and was fighting Captain America and Wanda and all of them. And like, I feel like, okay. yes, individually, I guess each of those fights wasn't very long, but they were long enough. And I don't know, I don't, I wouldn't enjoy if it was just a movie full of fight scenes. I think the fact that each of them was short and you can look at the movie as a whole and say, yes, I got to see Thanos fight quite a lot in this movie, uh, just I mean, not fight, all at the same time. I mean, when you say fight, it's kind of short lived. Uh, like the three fight scenes that were like actually long are the only ones that I actually enjoyed. But for instance, like we never saw Thanos get one of the Infinity Stones and then the Avengers or whomever, the Guardians or everyone just teaming up and fighting him and getting one back. Like that would have been fucking sick for for Thanos to get a stone and think he has it and like goes off somewhere. But then like the team goes on like this giant mission and somehow like tricks him and then gets one of the stones back, like pulls it off of his gauntlet. But then like think I- about... That could Think about happened. the ultimate ramifications of that is Thanos goes through all this trouble, gets a stone, and then the Avengers go through this huge big plan to get it back. And then what? Thanos does his plan again and gets it back from them? Then you just no. end up where you were before. Then Thanos goes for like, you know, he was already on the mission to go for another stone. And then on that mission, he like gets that stone, but like plus one bonus, he gets the other one too because they were there. They tried to stop that one too with the stone that he they took from him. But that's what I'm saying. Like eventually he would just get that stone back anyway. I mean, well, yeah. So then you're just like even adding stuff in. I mean, if you think about it, this movie was two hours and 30 minutes of him acquiring six stones. Like that's literally all it was. It was him getting a stone up, him getting a stone up, him getting a stone up, him getting a stone up. So why would you want to add a seventh thing to that? You're saying you want him well, to get all like all six stones, more... lose one, and then have to get that one back. Yeah, that's more dynamic. It adds more like that's just a seventh stone acquire. No, 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 no. You would have to you'd have to lob two stones in one. So rather than like him going and getting one stone each time, like once he'll get the stone back that he had at the same time as getting another stone. If that makes sense. I feel like I this know, movie was bland because it was him me. getting five stones. I mean, how does it sound better that he's just acquired five stones within two hours and then just snaps his finger and everyone dies? Like, how does that sound better to you? Because the way that they do it makes sense. And it, it makes sense, but it's not it good. It serves a narrative purpose to show how powerful he is. If he lost one of those battles, then he wouldn't be as big of a threat. The fact that he got all of those stones and even like every single time that we as the audience think he's about to get beaten and then he still succeeds even like the intense emotional moment when wanda has to kill vision and it's like this heartbreaking scene of her killing the person she loves and then thanos is like fuck you i got the time stone so i'm gonna bring him back and rip it out of his head like the fact that thanos every single step of the way beats them it emphasizes how strong of a villain he is that he can't be beaten yeah i just don't see how that makes it better like yeah we we know he's strong though i don't know i think he's it 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 made everyone else look like like garbage because i mean there was there was no dynamic of them actually being able to get one of the stones back or even being able to hide one of the stones or even like he they made him seem too good i feel like I mean, he definitely had vulnerable moments, and that's why even like another one of say one other one of my negatives is there is it on Titan they almost take the gauntlet off of his hand, right? And the only reason they failed there was because Peter Quill was a literal child and punched him in the face after he killed Gamora. But like they did have moments where they like 
it was possible for them to beat him. And then something happens and their moment is gone. And then he ends up beating them. Yeah. I mean, that scene where they almost got the gauntlet was one of the best scenes in the whole movie because it showed the other team actually putting an effort and almost winning and stuff like that. That makes sense to me. But like even yeah, there, I think they, like they could have them almost getting it like obviously because they're the good guys we want them to get it off and beat him but like had they actually taken the gauntlet in that scene and been like ha we got it and then run away like that that i feel like that would have been a worse movie i don't know i feel like if they would have gotten the gauntlet and then he has like no infinity stones and still has to go and fucking kick their shit in and he succeeds and gets the gauntlet back i mean that would have been a great start to a movie number two like the first movie could have been him acquiring the three stones just like he did in this movie and then a giant fight scene ensues and they get the gauntlet out of his hand and then the second movie starts with him retrieving the gauntlet and then having to kit like the the last two stones like that would have been a really think, good sequence i me. think if he had to go and get the gauntlet with three stones already in it like at that i feel like that would make everyone seem weak like you're talking about like all of these fight scenes where he just like effortly effortlessly beats people but if the avengers succeeded got the infinity gauntlet and then in the next movie he went and got it back from them with no infinity stones then it would be like oh well the avengers are just a bunch of weak ass bitches if he can beat all of them without any stones like that you could see first of all he's well, I mean, super powerful just on his own, but he starts the movie off with an infinity stone already. And so it sort of makes sense that he is already super strong. Plus, he has an infinity stone. So every time he enters a fight, he has the upper hand. And then when he wins a fight, he gets another infinity stone, which makes him even stronger and even harder to beat in the next battle. Well, right. But the only reason that he didn't lose the gauntlet is because of an idiot emotional mistake, right? Yeah, that same thing could have happened at the start of a next movie where there was an emotional mistake on the team's part. And then, you know, or it could have gone the round of he acquired another stone and used that to get his gauntlet back. And then he has four stones in the gauntlet or five. I don't know. I feel like there there would have been like a way of the team also getting a dub versus them them literally getting six L's in a row plus uh, like the whole the whole universe getting fucking killed. I mean, half the universe. Half the, yeah. I mean, still, I mean, that's that's 50% of people. I mean, do you see what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, I feel like... I see what you're saying. I just don't agree with it. I mean, that's fine. But you don't... I'm not asking you to. I'm just letting you know that I think this movie was too plain because getting six stones within the matter of three days, like, it, it just seemed too easy. It just seemed way too easy for the guy. And he could have done that at any point. And for that to be such a big threat of the universe and for it to be... Like, for that to happen and go over so easily, to me, is a problem. I mean, but also, like, I guess it, it, it's very unclear exactly how much time passes during the movie. But, like, you also have to account that these people are going, like, back and forth across the entire galaxy. So, like, there might just be a good chunk of time that is just travel. I mean, yeah, but with the things happening on Earth and all of that stuff, like, and people's aging and their hair length, I mean, that's all the telltale sign. like. I don't know. I mean, yeah, but it could it could have still been like two weeks. Like, yeah, but usually hair doesn't they, they, grow that fast, and people can get haircuts. <laughs> I mean, but even then, like two weeks to win over the whole universe, the whole everything, like that's that's kind of crazy. Like, why didn't he just do that at the start if it was going to be that easy for him? That, that's my problem. That, that's like my that main easy. issue. Say what? I said he probably didn't expect it to be that easy, and obviously it wasn't. I guess that easy maybe I don't really know like the timeline because we obviously we see at one point like his I mean it doesn't the even entire about reason the timeline, that this though. is his his plan is that like back when he was like on his home world and he was like hey we're running out of food maybe we should kill half the people and then we'll have plenty of food and everyone was like you're fucking insane and then they ran out of food and everyone died and he was like I'm right and because he's such a narcissist he is like I need to prove to everyone that I'm right and I can make the galaxy a better place if I just follow my plan. And so he built up an army and then even before the Infinity Stones were a thought for him, he was just like taking his army from planet to planet and killing half the people and saying, you're going to thank me for this. And so then at some point 
he had this idea that like, hey, there are these infinity stones and this could be a lot easier for me than having to do it one planet at a time. And so he was like, all right, well, I, I think he under maybe even underestimated it at first. He was like, I don't, yes, this will be easier, but I've got my own mission to do. So he was like, I'm just going to keep going planet to planet and killing people, but I'm going to send out some people like, like they mentioned, he sent Loki uh, during the, the first Avengers and like, I, I, they don't really go into it too much, but like he had people out there or in like, um, uh, uh, Ronan, the accuser in the first guardians of the galaxy movie was also like, he's just sending people out and he's like, Hey, go get an infinity stone and bring it back to me because he's the leader. So he can tell other people to do it. And then every single time he's done that, he's, they failed. Loki failed. Ronan failed all of these people that he's like, Hey, go get an infinity stone. They failed to do it. So at that point, then he's like, all right, now I'm going to do it. And so that's why it took so long. Like to answer your question of why didn't he just do it earlier? He was trying to do it earlier. He just didn't think that it would be so difficult. He, yeah. I mean, he didn't think it would be so easy. Well, he thought it would be easy enough that he could send other people to do it. Right. Once he did it himself, it was easy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get where you're coming from. I just think it could have been put into movies and the storylines, even if they were, you know, like like the, the, the one where he had to throw his daughter off. Like, yes, what they did in this movie was acceptable and it makes sense. But if they would have drawn that out and I don't know what else they could have done in that scene, but they could have thought of something better because I'm not a, you know, I'm not a movie dude, but they could have made that into a 30 minute scene and really drawn it out and really milked like the emotional aspect of it and like showed like proof of why he loves her. Like all, all that we knew from that is like, oh, he's crying. Uh, well, I mean, I think they the did. They had the whole like flashback of when he like he was a girl. She was went a girl. to Gamora's planet. Yeah. yeah but, and then he I like mean, that doesn't show pulls love. her out of the, that it doesn't show love shows that I, I, I mean, love is a very nebulous thing, so it's hard to define. But the fact that he like he has this hard rule where he's like, I'm going to separate the population into halves and then at random this 50 percent is going to die and that 50 percent is going to live and he specifically chose to take this girl and have her not be part of his system and say yes i want to do this randomly but you are i'm making the choice to have you not be a random item here i'm going to pull you out of the crowd and separately talk to you and then like he it, it, he's obviously fucked up and like he definitely doesn't love her in the way that a it's not a healthy relationship, but in his twisted narcissistic mind, he does truly love her. And I think that that I think that comes across. I think perhaps they could have maybe added like one more scene to just hammer at home. But I, I, don't, I feel like we all got the message. I mean, we all got the message because they short us of of good quality movies that they uh, are uh, quality scenes that they could have put in the film i don't know i thought it was good enough and i i really like the fact that the soul stone was a completely different mechanic from the other ones like all the other stones are just like he has to go and find it but this one is like it's not necessarily about locating the actual stone it's just about are you willing to make the sacrifice necessary to get it and then right. the stone like presents itself to you if you're able to to pay the cost for it. Right. And and even that could have been a theme to go out throughout the whole six stones. Like for yeah, the but that, what? What do you mean a theme? Like each stone has a different power and you have to exhibit that source of power or loss or whatever to acquire the stone, like you said. Like like even in Harry Potter, <laughs> even in Harry Potter they did they did that to where you had to like do get, go through a trial to get, you know, certain things, right? You couldn't just go and grab it and dip out and then you have that power. No, like you have to show knowledge. You have to show your, exp like, I don't know how they would do time. Like you have to show I something. I must be like, I don't know what you're talking about with Harry Potter. Are you talking about like the Horcruxes? Yeah, yeah. Because I think only only like two of those had a trial. But like if you think about it, to kill the Horcrux, you had to go through the thing and like with a sword, you had to really will, you know, you had to have like the th the will for it to show up when you when you need it most. Right. And something like that could have translated into this movie, too, to where it's like 
rather than just taking it off someone's neck and calling it a day, like you had to do something in order to get the time stone. And there were different trials for each. Like that would have been really cool to see. Like, like you said, for this one stone, it was really refreshing that he had to do something rather than just fight, right? But it was refreshing because all the other ones were different. I think if they had a trial for each one, then it would just be repetitive again. I mean, but the other ones weren't different. The other ones were all the same. That's what I'm saying. That's why this one being different is special. Exactly. But if they were and all I'm... trials, then they would all be the same. But and I don't, I don't think would... so. I don't think so. I mean, it would make, it would make logical sense for each stone to have its own like mechanism of acquiring it if, this, if these are like the stones that started the universe how can anyone just like you know put it in a fucking gauntlet and call it a day like i don't know and and we never got to see the scene of how the gauntlet was made you know like we we only heard like oh he killed all of us and he put my eye my hands in like these things and i don't know like even that yeah because have been way again better. it's not what what do we get of watching the dwarves make the gauntlet like all that would do is like, ruin the mystery behind Nidavellir and like the whole reveal of when Thor is like, hey, there's this place where my hammer got made and it's amazing. And you hear Rocket be like, oh, my gosh, that place as actually exists. Like I've only ever heard about it. I, in I understand that and you're they arguing. Go there and it's beautiful. I get. But if we saw it before that, then it'd be like, eh. I get that you're arguing for what they did in the movie, right? But I'm saying there are plenty of other better ways that they could have done it. Like there, I, I, mean, I can't I, argue. Everything against... can be improved. I just like I, I don't think that the way they did it is bad. I, I'm not going to say that it's perfect said, and it could well, never be thing. better. I never said that what they did is bad. I'm saying they could have made it better because it was so dry. You said it was boring. It was boring. And that, that, I stick that's to that. pretty much saying it's bad. <laughs> no, no, no. Boring is different than it being bad. Like it was entertaining to watch and it wasn't bad, but it, like it was dry. It was. They could have done so much more with every single one of those scenes rather than just him going there, grabbing it and dipping out. That is what I'm saying. But I, I feel like they did do more. I like I, when you I reduce so. it down to going somewhere and grabbing a stone, then yeah, that sounds boring. But they're was so much happening in each scene and maybe part of it is just the history of the entire franchise because like when you have all of these different um like every individual character has their own history in their own other movies that is baggage that they bring into this one and so when you remember and understand all of that you understand what's going on in the characters heads better which makes the interactions more meaningful and then you get i feel like you get more out of each scene i i can definitely understand like maybe when you are just like looking at this as its own individual movie it perhaps doesn't hold up quite as well i mean that's what we're supposed but, to do right but i don't think so i think that I, in in a lot of cases yes i think each movie should stand up on its own but this is a special case where so. this nope. movie is specifically built to be the final chapter in a story that started 20, 10 years earlier in iron man one and every single movie has built up to this point and i think taking all of those away and being like well i didn't like this movie because i didn't pay attention to those other ones seems unfair i don't agree I think every movie, whenever you produce something, it should be able to stand on its own and then link into every other one of the movies in some sort of way. Like if you watch this movie without having seen any of the other ones, it should be making sense and it should be entertaining to watch. Now, I think if you it, watch does, the I think other it ones, makes it enough add sense. Information. It, you just like there is an entire story in this movie. It has a beginning, middle and an end. It starts with Thanos beginning his mission like yes we don't see him go to xandar and get the first stone but like he is essentially at the start of his journey at the beginning of this movie and then by the end he has completed his journey it is one if you think about it with thanos as the protagonist of the story he has a complete story here so everything else from the other movies is just adding to this but i feel like I don't know, maybe I'm just misunderstanding you, but it seems like from what you're saying, it's just that that story wasn't good enough. But I think it would be good enough once you add those additional layers. 
but I don't think that's the way you, we should be talking about the movie. Like, like we, I think I, that would be like if you watched the last Harry Potter movie and you were like, well, this doesn't make any sense. Why is someone like split their soul into seven pieces? Like what's going on with Voldemort? Like, yeah, you need to watch the movies before for all that to make sense. Right. But it's part of a series. But we could judge the last movie of Harry Potter. And as a standalone movie, it would have had great impact because they didn't rush anything in it, which is why the last book was split into two rather than them just like putting it all of that stuff in two hours and 30 minutes and calling it a day. Yeah, but splitting it into two, like I said, doesn't necessarily make it better because there but, are plenty of other series like The Hunger Games split their last movie into two parts. Freaking like just making it two movies doesn't make it better. If you like, I, I feel like the story that needed to be told here was told here. And it's not like this. It's not like this is the last Marvel movie ever. Like there is stuff after that. There is still story to tell. So I think thinking about it like oh they could have split this into two movies because they could have done a lot more there's still more that they're going to do we still have more movies to watch there is more happening so it was i i'm just gonna leave it at this and it was too rushed it, it just didn't go into I, enough, I, enough enough depth I, of each stone i completely understand i i still think you're wrong <laughs> I, it, you can't understand and then say you're wrong. That doesn't make sense. I can. I can understand a point and disagree with it. W it wouldn't be... I, I wouldn't say it's wrong, though, because it's not a wrong viewpoint. Like, I agree that this movie was a decent movie. Yeah, okay, movie, I guess, like, objectively, saying... you can't be wrong because it's just an opinion. <laughs> but I'm saying that's not what I meant by wrong. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, well, in, in, from my opinion, for the audience, this movie was just too dry and it was too straightforward to each individual topic versus putting more uh, dynamic into it of the situation of like a push and pull between the teams did you uh did you have any like points that you wanted to get to <laughs> we haven't talked about any of the points and it's been an hour yeah um well i'm just gonna skip half the list but let's talk about all the deaths that happened within the first minute of the movie um, okay loki dies like right yes. off the bat basically doesn't get brought back unfortunately uh -huh. um thor also dies but you know at one sort point of. the movie gets brought back yeah 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 i mean what do you think about that starting the movie off uh, just think, killing off characters i think it's it's hard not to look at it from a like a meta perspective because i feel like for someone going fresh into this movie it is entirely possible that you could just be like oh my gosh thor just died but at the same time like they because there was so much promotion for this stuff and like in the trailer for the movie there are you see thor in a lot of other things that's and why so, i never watched trailers ever i, I never watched trailers. i sort of knew in the beginning that thor wasn't going to die there yeah um but loki's death i think makes sense because I mean, you have to set up, you have to set up the villain. And first of all, him beating Hulk shows like physically how powerful he is. But then on a sort of showing that he's a threat by killing off someone that up to this point has been practically unkillable because we've already, like, we've already seen Loki die twice before this. He died in the first Thor movie. He died in he died in Thor 2 and then every single time he just comes back and we're like oh it was just he was just faking out death and this time like Thanos makes a specific point of being like no resurrections this time this motherfucker is actually dead and so that's like helps to it, it, it's just it's just good villain setup and I'm more sad that Heimdall died but I also understand there's not really much more for his character to do he was the guardian of the bifrost and now at the entirety of asgard has been destroyed so like he doesn't have a job anymore he's just like a cool guy and i think be the, uh, just like with loki because we've built up such a strong uh understanding of his character and we care about him having thanos kill two people that we care about in the beginning of the movie is like oh this dude is serious like it gives you a reason to be worried about him whereas if he didn't kill anyone then he wouldn't seem like much of a threat okay but he they could still make it more of a storyline rather than just in the first minute them already basically being killed 
Do you see what I'm saying? Like that is one of the parts no, that's just I really don't. For me. Like Loki is not a what, person. What would be the more story there? I mean, like, like obviously, I know you, neither of us are screenwriters, but just like in your head, when you imagine like this could have been better. Well, like you know, what, starting the movie off without him just already having them in one room. That that's a start. Like, what do you mean? How did they get to room? be there? What happened that made the Hulk, Loki, and Thor all sit there in like this one little room area? Right. They were all. They're on a ship. It's not like they can go anywhere. Right. But the th first thing that we see is like the ship. Everyone's fucking dead. And yeah, I, I mean, like that could have been a fucking scene that that. Itself. It will, but it just it just would have been a fight scene. I feel like I don't and know. what's wrong and with that. What's wrong with the fight scene? It's better. Because I you, don't it's want a to movie have a fight. Scene. We already got six different fight hey, scenes. And, we don't the need movie anymore. Started off with them just killing some of the main characters that have been main characters in the whole movie. How are you saying that's yes. better than like there being a fight scene? The last movie left because on the cliffhanger I, that the ship was looming in front of this giant massive thing. And then the next movie starts and it's like, we don't know what happened. We only know that. But we oh, do know what happened. Died. We know exactly what happened. I think if you don't know what happened, then you're not paying attention. Everyone just died. We saw they at the everyone. end of Thor Ragnarok, his ship shows up. In this one, it is very easy to know exactly what happened. But that's what I'm saying. He got on their it's ship. He blew some easy, shit up. It is Thor not. and Loki tried to fight him, which is why they're in the same location, and he beat them. Cayman, it's it's not easy to put those two together. Like I said, as a movie, why is that it needs not to easy? be freestanding. If it starts off with just but like what's everyone not fucking easy about putting them together. Cayman, if you did not, see, you have to put those other movies to rest. We are judging this movie based on its own existence. We can't put this movie and every other movie that we've seen together. That's not how this works. That is absolutely how no, it works. No, we are not judging a series. We are judging the films. We are talking about this film, period. We're not talking about every yes, other film and prior in to. in this film, it starts off with uh, nothing. Thor it starts and off with Loki. nothing. It starts off with Thor and Loki just having escaped Asgard, and they're on the same ship that you saw at the end of that movie. If you well, don't we, know that they're on that... we don't know that. So we you'd shouldn't... rather spend hours more explaining every single thing no, that happened in the other movies there should just so be you a fight understand scene. it in this one in other good movies a fight scene wouldn't explain other... anything you could still have the Cayman, same problem you you'd be listen. like why are they in the same Cayman. movie okay i'll listen to you and then you listen to me in other good movies when it starts off on a cliffhanger there is like a quick preview of what like happened in the prior movie so that the audience knows oh like oh yeah this is where we are okay let, let's get going and then it could have been a great fight scene in Sue. I think starting off with like this giant ship just being killed. Let's say you don't know what happened in the prior movie. Starting off with a ship, everyone being killed. These two main characters that you like everyone knows these main characters are literally on their knees dying for each other. And then they're killed off in like the most pathetic way is a bad way to start a movie. They should have tied the movie prior to if we're going to talk about the other movie. They should have like showed why they are in the situation that they're in rather than just starting off with them in a room and being killed that is so fucking lame everyone on that ship died and we didn't see any of it like we have to assume that there was a big battle and we have to assume that everyone died except for these two three people right that's all we got that's all we got and then and then they die and then it goes to the next scene it's like okay well that's fucking dry corn cut and fucking boring that's how i saw this movie okay i think there was a quick setup because even in the opening title sequence, we hear like the distress signal being sent out from the Asgardian ship. So you understand, hey, we're on a ship. Something bad is happening. There is a distress signal being sent. Then we see the ship torn apart. So you're like, oh, shit got real. A battle happened. Like all of that stuff is explained visually in a very concise manner without... I, I still... I know... And this is just a personal preference thing. I know, obviously, some people are like, could watch an entire movie of just fight scenes. I personally do not think that a fight scene is necessary in every case. And I think in this case, a fight scene was not necessary. We knew, whether you've seen Thor Ragnarok or not, it has been explained in the first two minutes, the Asgardians are on a ship, Thanos is attacking that ship. That's your setup. We know from that small amount of information that they are going to fight. And whether we see that fight or not, seeing the aftermath of that fight tells us what we need to know. Loki and Thor tried to stop Thanos. They lost. 
that that is all of the information that you need. And I, like I said, personal preference, I don't need to see them fight to care about that event. I think it is perfectly fine to, to have something happen and as even something important to have something important happen and not necessarily know exactly every single step of how it happened. And that's the same way that I felt with him getting the reality stone on nowhere. Like, yeah, I guess it would have, they probably could have made a cool fight scene of him taking his entire army into nowhere and killing a bunch of civilians and then torturing the collector. But I don't need to see that to understand that it happened and to know that this is a problem and to care about what's happening to these characters. The fact that the Guardians fly into nowhere and it's desolate shows you, hey, some bad shit went down here. And then we pretty much get the scene of him torturing the Collector, even though it ends up being fake. You see pretty much what would have happened even in the actual situation. And then he just ends up with the stone like and i mean we even get a, albeit short but we do get a small fight scene after that i don't know fight scenes just like that's not having fight scenes doesn't make a good movie for me i think the things that they did in this movie without resorting to violence were much more interesting like even like the giant fight at the end with the shield and all of the whatever like alien things bursting through and then there's like the huge uh wakandan army like that those were cool fight scenes and like seeing like war machine and falcon fly around and, and blow up those big like wheel grinder things that was cool but i didn't care as much about those scenes as i did watching captain america hold back Thanos's hand when he tries to grab him and you see the surprise on Thanos's face like how the fuck is this tiny little human holding me back and like genuine shock at how strong he is and then watching him walk up to Wanda and she's holding him back with her powers and killing Vision like that's not a fight scene necessarily that's like one woman standing in the mat in in the middle of these two guys I don't know I felt like the like i said when we first started i think the character interactions were my favorite part of this movie and that like from a comedic standpoint but also from an emotional standpoint i think seeing what is going on in these characters minds is what this movie is about and it is an emotional journey it is a a, a physical journey for a lot of them but a I, I think that what they are feel what the characters are feeling and what they are going through is what is most important in this movie. And I think that comes across in this movie by itself, but I think it also helps when you know these characters and you have seen them and you understand their mindset from watching previous movies. And I think I think at a basic level, like I said, this movie does hold up on its own. It has an entire story arc from Thanos's perspective that is this this is a complete movie. It's not relying on other stuff, but you will definitely get more it, it turns a good movie into a great movie when you understand where all these characters are coming from. So for someone who doesn't understand where these characters are coming from, I can understand how it might feel boring, but I do not think that it's fair to judge the movie like that because I, in the same way, like I said earlier, yes, you could probably understand the last Harry Potter movie without watching the other ones, but it's not going to be nearly as interesting. You're not going to care about the characters the same way you do. You're not going to care about the stakes. You're not going to know about Voldemort's huge plan. It's just like, this evil guy is here and he's trying to kill everyone and there's a bunch of good wizards trying to stop him. When you cut out the rest of the series, then yeah, of course it's not going to be as interesting. But I think it holds up as an as the end of a story. And I think you have to look at it from that perspective. I think if we were to go back and watch 
just one Harry Potter movie and judge it completely on its own, it would also not be as good. But that doesn't mean it's not good. It doesn't mean it's boring. It just means you as the audience have to participate a little bit by watching the movies that it is very clear, I think, lead up to this movie. It's not like it's a secret that there have been all these Marvel movies out there. So it doesn't make any sense that an actual audience member would be like, you know what, I'm going to go see Infinity War, even though I haven't seen any of these other movies. That doesn't make any sense. That's not going to be the majority of the audience. So why would you create a movie that tailors to that small percentage of audience when most of the people who are seeing this movie already know what's happening because they've already seen the other movies? That's what I'm trying to say. I think, I think it has its own story structure. Like it's not like, it, it's not like a two parter where like, if you had split it up into two movies and then you just watch the second one, that wouldn't make any sense. That's like, you need to see the first one before you see this one because it's a two part movie. But this as its own movie has its own story. And the story in this movie doesn't rely on the story from the other movies. It's just the character uh, behavior that relies on past movies. Do you see what I mean? You talked just then for longer than it took to get two Infinity Stones. That is my issue with this movie. But I, I don't get think what that that's explaining. a problem. It is. It is. Okay, you, that's you, fine I, I that you like think that. I'm telling you I don't. That's also okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm just letting you know that the reason I say this movie is bland and boring is because of that issue. They took so many shortcuts in this movie almost to the point to where if you were new and watching this movie, it wouldn't make sense. And I think that's an issue. But what I'm saying is I don't think like 95, probably more percent of the people watching this movie are not new. Uh, I mean, that's not right, probably. I mean, think of like all the new people like me that would just be like, yeah, You've sure. You've seen go the other people. movies, though. Well, now I have, but I hadn't before. Like, <laughs> like I told you, I'm a very casual movie watcher. Like if my buddies I mean, are that's like, true, hey, this movie but come also out. I think. I think you're probably in the minority there. I think most people who saw Infinity War in theaters are at least familiar with a few of the other movies. No one's going into this as their first Marvel movie. But I think that's where, as a like producer, that's an issue. You can't assume that your audience knows like every single one of the other last movies. You just can't assume that. That's not I, a fair I, assumption. I think it is. I don't. I, how is that a fair assumption? Did you did you, you did go, you not hear my entire spend, spiel about Harry Potter? Like it. That's like saying we should Harry assume Potter, that you can someone's going to watch Potter Half Blood own. Prince. No, you but can you watch can't. Harry that's Potter what I'm trying to say. And have a good time watching we can, it. Absolutely. We can try and go back and review like Deathly Hallows Part Two without having watched any of the other ones and see if it holds up on its own. It it will. I bet you it. it will. I bet that's you it thing. does not. It will because it goes back and it does flashbacks of the prior movie. It doesn't just. No, assume. it doesn't. It maybe when does the like last two time that you've flashbacks. Seen the movie? Pretty recently, actually. Well, then you should know. The only I do. That's why I'm telling Harry you. Harry Potter movies are if you compare it to the books, which is the only reason that it makes them all terrible and trashy, is because it took so so many shortcuts compared to the books. See, this I, Thor movie I think that made me feel like I was reading area. Harry Potter and then watching the movie. That is an area where movies, I think, should always stand on their own. I think if you need to read a book to understand something in the movie, that's a problem. But when you're watching the seventh movie in a franchise and you're complaining because you don't remember what happened in the first six movies, that's your fault, not the movie's fault. What? That's just my stance on that. Your stance is that you have to watch all seven prior movies and remember everything that happened in them to understand and enjoy this movie? I'm not talking. Well, I'm talking about Harry Potter at this point, but the same applies here. You can't get mad at the last movie in a franchise because you didn't care enough to pay attention to the previous films. That that's just that's just a really bad review. Then, like, hey guys, you have to watch all seven movies to have a good time watching this movie. Sorry, that makes it a bad well, movie. If you don't want to watch seven movies, then don't watch this one. But that makes it a bad movie. I don't think it does. Imagine if you like. Imagine if you tried to do that to a TV show. If you went to like, you can watch any episode of Friends and have a good time watching it. You don't have to know. Yes, every because other Friends episode. is a freaking 
every single episode has nothing to do with the other ones. But when you have long format TV, like if you tried to watch Game of Thrones and someone had never seen Game of Thrones before and you were like, why don't you watch season eight? Like you would still it's have not, a good time watching it. Absolutely. You just wouldn't know how they got there. Are you saying you'd It'd be like a fresh blank st slate? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying here, too. You are you can still have a good time watching this movie, but you're just not going to understand as much. Right. But it is wasn't it. It's like not enjoyable. That's what I'm saying. It was so cut short on all the shit they were trying to put into this movie that it made it a bland movie. So you really have two complaints then. You're saying the movie was boring and you see, didn't that's the thing. Stuff. I never said it was boring. That's what you are. You saying. literally just no. did. You said it was bland, bland. and boring. Right. Bland before is this. different than boring. Bland is like there's not enough flavor in this movie. Also, 20 minutes ago, you said it was no, boring. you keep saying it was boring. Listen back to our podcast. It was boring. I think that there is just a miscommunication here then. If I had a sandwich and then I told someone that sandwich was bland, I to me that says I didn't enjoy eating that sandwich. Not like I really enjoyed it and I wish I had more because it would have been a better sandwich if I had more. Well, sandwich. I think they go hand in hand. Like you can't enjoy the sandwich without having the full sandwich. Like if you, can you can't eat enjoy something, the sandwich without having the full sandwich, then it's not a good sandwich to begin with. Like when I feel like something was taken away from me. It takes away from the experience of it as a whole. Like if something great happens and then like something puts a sour taste in your mouth, it's going to change how you feel about, about that thing as a whole. And that's what I'm saying about this movie. I, I don't know. I, I guess I guess I get where you're coming from. I think I also just like, I don't know, maybe it's just a we just got very different experiences out of this film. They may have just put too much into this movie. That's all I'm saying. They, they put too much with too little time. Like that's, if you really, that's fair. If I you think, really think back think, on like all the things that happened in two hours and 30 minutes, it's just a lot. And that's where my, my thought process of they should have made this just two films came from. Do you besides the overarching blandness, was there any like specific negatives that you had? Um, like, I mean, like I said, I think that I think that was like probably like the only thing like I think all this like the, the scenes made sense to me um right. but i just wish they were longer because they were good scenes but they were just too short i don't know okay um yeah. i did on on the positive side i did like i I really liked the way that thanos was handled character wise i think they showed a lot of like first of all he he says it multiple times but like they really show even through his actions that like he's not just like a bad guy out here killing people like he he just very firmly believes in his philosophy and he's like the galaxy is gonna be better off if i kill half of them but he never in this movie kills someone without a, a direct reason to do so and he never breaks a promise like uh dr strange is like if you let tony live i'll give you the stone he gives him the stone he leaves and lets tony live and like he he is a very consistently motivated character and he he only kills people when it's necessary from his point of view yeah 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 that's commendable but like i said like and, people, i've never said it he he believes that he's not the bad guy right he just thinks he's doing and i think that's a very it. that's a very strong and like we talked about with killmonger on black black panther i think that makes a better villain when you have a bad guy that's just like out there being evil it's not as interesting but when you have a bad guy that thinks that they're the good guy yeah. that's when it's interesting yeah, yeah yeah i agree i agree but you also see like even in like this it, it, it to add to the whole thing with his relationship with gamora you even see how it, you get a glimpse of how fucked up he actually is on nowhere when he's like not only is he like physically manipulative but he is also emotionally manipulative and like the fact that he would allow gamora to believe that she killed him just to then say oh i knew you actually cared about me and like you can tell that he he's just fucking with her to try and like he obviously wants at it at some capacity wants to repair their relationship because he does think of her as his daughter and so he's like I'm going to show her that she would be sad if I was dead. And then when I turn up alive, 
she will recognize that she actually loves me. But like, that's such a fucked up way to think. But I just, I think it's interesting the way that they show, they, they make it very clear. You can tell why Gamora hates him because it, it's very easy to imagine that he's been doing shit like that the entire time that he raised her. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely not the uh, greatest role model. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, I did like the um, like comedy that they let Drax show in this movie where he was like, oh, oh yeah. I practice like moving so slow, like the human eye can't see me. And they're like, hey, Drax. And he's I like, oh, the, man. The Guardians felt very consistent, which I really liked. Like, obviously, it's the same actors. So you have that going for you. But like, there's different writers and a different director on this movie than there is on the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. But I feel like there was never a point where it like they always felt like the same characters. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Like where... They like find Thor and they're like, this is a handsome, muscular man. You're a boy. And then yeah. uh, he was like mocking Thor's voice and, and Thor was like, are you mocking me? And he's like, are you mocking me? <laughs> right. Um, I, like, he's like, he's like, look at those muscles. And he's like, I'm muscly and Rocket's like, you're one sandwich away from being fat. And I, it's yeah. like, he keeps talking about it and he's like, all right, this is a wake up call. I'm going to get a Bowflex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think they're, they were definitely the funniest group in this movie. And I, I, but I also think like Thor by himself, first of all, it's absolutely mind blowing to me. And we saw this as well, I think, in Ragnarok. Chris Hemsworth is very talented at bouncing back and forth between being really, really funny and really, really dramatic. And I think it that also shows up here where you like you get moments where thor is being funny and especially in his interactions with the guardians but then also like the like the heartstring i think of this movie is thor's revenge mission and you see how much grief that he has and he's literally lost everything he lost his mom back in thor 2 he's lost his dad in the last movie now he's lost his best friend and his brother mm -hmm. he lost his home planet like this is a character who is at rock bottom and well everyone else in the movie is like worried about the stones and oh we need to protect the stones and make sure thanos doesn't get the stones thor doesn't give a single shit about the infinity stones he's like i'm going to make a weapon and i'm going to kill thanos that is his only mission yeah yeah and i think it's it it's very I, i'm very impressed by chris hemsworth's ability to portray that amount of grief and that solitude and you can see how sad thor is and then at the same time also like he still does a lot of funny stuff in the movie yeah 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 i feel that i'm with you on that one um i did have a couple other small things like i, d I just noticed i've seen this movie a couple times but i just noticed this time that um they at when tony is talking to pepper in the park at the beginning that she has an engagement ring and i was like oh shit yeah that's like a follow-up from because at the end of the uh at the end of spider-man homecoming remember when they were like oh spider-man you can be an avenger and then he says no and then their backup plan is to announce that they're engaged and then they actually got engaged and they're engaged in this movie right 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 i was i i don't know how i didn't notice that last time i saw it but i was like oh cool yeah i noticed they they like were together and engaged but I just uh, that didn't click that did not click um um i really i i <laughs> maybe i'm just like a sad sack because i know last time um i don't even remember what movie it was but one of these previous movies we did and i was talking about a really sad scene and you were like oh i didn't think that was sad at all but <laughs> at the end when everyone's getting dusted and then there's that like moment between uh tony and peter when oh, he's yeah. like He's like, Hold he's like on, I don't want to go, Mr. Stark. Yeah. yeah, I like in the theater. And also when I was watching it yesterday, I I cried. That it was that moment gets me. Really? Yeah. Oh, no, I did not cry. But like, I felt that was a sad part. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely emotional for sure. Yeah. But also I like it's it's not too terribly difficult to make me cry. So like I said, that might just be me. <laughs> um, That's pretty much all I think we've mostly covered like there there's some small unimportant stuff but we've covered most of the strong points that i had here so yeah i think unless you've got something else no i i just went through my list i think we talked about it through basically the whole talk cool all right well i know you've got places to be so let's hurry up and get to trivia let's do it 
Um, our first piece of trivia here says the filmmakers wanted to create small physical rules that would allow characters to stay in the fight with Thanos. The idea that he had to close his fist in order to use a stone was one of the bare minimums that allowed for a fight to be mm, put up. Yeah, I like so obviously that. like when when you're dealing with someone who has these like these things that give him practically infinite power, like you have to create some sort of thing that's like, OK, well, obviously he can't just like immediately kill everyone he comes into contact with. So there has to be some way for them to fight him. And part of that was that if they can keep him from closing his fist, then they have a chance. Yeah, like uh, when Tony used that device and to hold his fist open, and then yeah. they used also the cloak yep. from Doctor Strange, yeah. Uh, second fact is Thor is both the first and last Avenger seen by Thanos in this film. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, you're right. True, yeah. Because he his ship is the first one that he invades, and then Thor is the last person he sees when he stabs him in the chest. Yeah, yeah, the loop closes. And our third... And final fact, I honestly could not find that many like interesting trivia. There was a lot, a lot of trivia, but a lot of it was just like meh, you know? Yeah. But our our last fact here is that Thanos actually has the most screen time in this film at 29 minutes. Holy smokes. That's a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, second place is Gamora with 19 minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, wow. I didn't think she was in that that much. Well, it was no. quite quite a bit. Yeah, she was there quite a bit. And uh, the person with the least amount of screen time is Ned Leeds, who is uh, Peter Parker's best friend. He's just on that one oh, scene like on the school seconds. bus. And he has 15 seconds of screen time. Yeah, even 15, I think, was a lot for him because all he was like, hey, cause a distraction. He goes, oh, we're all going to die. And that was really it. Yep. Yeah. Still got paid, though. He still got paid. That's true. That is true. I wonder how much he got paid for 15 seconds. I don't know, but probably a few thousand dollars. I'd imagine. Oh, did you catch did you catch the Stan Lee cameo? I did. He was the bus driver. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was like, Have you never seen an alien ship before? <laughs> you act <laughs> like you've never seen an alien ship before. Yeah. I caught him this time because I knew I failed last Perfect. time. All right. Well, those are our thoughts on Avengers Infinity War. So for our audience, if you have any different thoughts or anything that you thought we should have talked about that we didn't or you know just give us your opinion about our opinion let us know subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to and also leave us a review reviews help tell your friends and family about us follow us on twitter and instagram at cash fan pod the links for those will be in the description if you want to send us a message you can do so on either of those platforms or you can send an email to casual at gmail.com oh yeah let us know if your thoughts and or next movies that you want us to uh to review yeah mo movie recommendations are always welcome yes big time all right well this has been casual fanatic thanks for listening thanks for listening